Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella, and this little guy has absolutely nothing to do with today's video, although he's super cute. He's actually a little thrift store find. I found him for 10 cents. He was completely faded out. I gave him a new jacket and redid his little hat. I think I wrote a story about him too on my gnomes page. If I can find it, I'll link it in the pinned comment. But anyway, back to the video. <laughs> Today's video is about some craft room adventure I just went on. I made some changes again, and I also did a little thrift store find makeover. So today's video is not a tutorial of any kind, it's just for fun. So with all that said, let's get started. And I have these three panels. I have no idea what they were for. I found them in my dad's burn pile. And they would go across that wall back there. I'll just take this right off. Yeah, that just comes off like that. But uh, yeah, let's get going. Alright guys, I'm just doing a quick edit to scan the top shelf and also to be clear that I'm going to do a grand reveal once I do my thrifty store find makeover and that find is going to go right here in this corner and that's part of my grand reveal. <laughs> and since I filmed the first time, I've also added a tree here and that you won't see that in the next couple of clips. Inside that tree is an old foil roll and that just adds some strength for my shelf here. And my shelf is two layers of cardboard that I glued together covered with a paper towel and there's also brackets that I built underneath out of foil and then of course the trees also help hold it up. The other thing you won't see in the next couple of clips is the mushrooms that I've since added and there's more of those in the works. There's also one more surprise coming with this wall and I'll reveal all of that at the end. And if you're not interested in a thrifty store makeover, that's totally fine. You can use the pinned comment below and look for the timestamps. I don't know if you noticed when I first put these panels up how damaged they actually were. They were warped and there was huge cracks, especially this one. There was a crack so large that I could see the wallpaper through it. So that's why I added these extra branches here. But this little thank you card here is from a boy named Oliver who's a fellow miniaturist. And this card makes me extremely happy. That's why I put it there. And I'm actually manifesting a silver play button for this spot because I got one there. And that one's for my other channel. And I didn't get to celebrate that one because I was sick in the hospital at the time. And yeah, I got the silver play button while I was battling an illness. So I never even talked about that button. So I wanna get another one <laughs> for this channel that you're watching. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do so, so I can properly celebrate getting a silver play button. And we'll celebrate it together. Anyway, I put a branch up there to hold it in place. You can see it there. So I'll put one here when I get my new play button. And then Oliver's thank you card will move down here somewhere. And I can't put up Candolf. Candolf is my garbage can that I just recently did on video for you guys. Because he's just too large and he takes up too much space. So I think I'm going to um, redo this one here. Turn this one into an old tree. But we'll do that another day. But over here, I have a plan. And that plan involves this little thrift store find here. This is an art easel. I think I paid about $9 for it. It's got the two drawers with the plastic inserts. So I want to take that out and turn this into a little shelf for, for all my little tools and stuff. And I think the first thing we're going to do is just take out the drawers and remove the plastic inserts. And today's video is brought to you by the letter M. Okay. 
but I did the black base coat and now I'm doing hunter green on top. All right, now I'm doing the drawers. I've already done one. And I just pasted in some old music sheets on that one. And I don't want them both to be the same, so I think this one I'm going to do scrapbooking paper. You can do anything, old maps, letters, newspaper, anything. It's just a nice way to clean up an inside of a drawer and give it a little bit more interest. So I got some glue mixed with a little bit of water. I should have painted the inside of the sides as well because I feel like I want to do that now. <laughs> so I'm probably going to do it a little bit backwards. If you're going to paste paper in, it's always a good idea to paint first and then put your paper in. Okay, and then you just put in your paper and then you put the glue on top. I wasn't planning on using the drawer pulls that came with it because I am missing one, but I was just going through some of my beads that I have on hand and I found one that's kind of similar <laughs> a little bit. But what I'm going to do, because I don't really like these anyway because they're a little bit, they feel a little bit too small, I'm going to cover them with some foil, masking tape and paper towel, and I'll just make them a little bit bigger. But to get the foil on there to stay, I'm going to use some hot glue first. Okay, so now I'm going to do the other door pull here, and I think the easiest way to do this is crimp over one end. And then crimp over this end. I think doing it the opposite way would have been better. Crimp this end first, and then this side. Okay, I can stick another wire in there. Okay, that's better. Now I'll crimp this side over. Okay, now I'm just going to put some tape on there. Alright, now I'll get this guy down. We're going to be putting some foil over top of this so it's okay. So this masking tape is definitely not going to stay. So I'm going to put some paper down on top. After I turned the camera off, I still didn't like the way that felt. It felt a little bit wobbly and I figured it would move those wires there and eventually they would cut free or break free. Um, so I just took a wire like this, this is very thin wire, and I just wrapped it around and around and around until I couldn't wrap it anymore and now it's sturdy. So now I will do the foil work and then add masking tape and paper towel over top. I think I'm going to add some legs to this as well. And I was just going through my beads here that I also got at a thrift store. And I found three so far, like this. I need to find one more. So I have to dump that bucket out in a minute. But I was just going to show you the inside of the drawers here. Or the drawer pulls first. They're so cute and wonky. And because wonky things are my favorite, I'm just in love with those. So these drawers I did end up painting on the inside. The inside, um, 
walls are painted brown on this one and this one I went with green. So let's put these drawers to use right now. Just sanding down the glossy surface, also making it more flat so it'll be easier to glue. I was going to put some of my tools in the drawers, but I don't like the fact that they're just flying around in there. Why not just make it a little bit more rustic looking, because I had some twigs on hand, I always do for the gnome houses, and I just sawed a couple down to the right size. And I'll just weigh it down and let it dry. And I only had one twig left that was big enough to be a stopper, so I just chose to go in the center of this one. And in here I'm going to keep my scissors, and I also keep these coasters. I get these at the thrift store, and they're great for mixing paint on. I use them quite often, and they wash off very easy. And masking tape, because I always need that. My favorite pokey tool. And a pair of pliers that my dad rescued over 30 years ago from the ocean. He found them at the bottom of the ocean all rusted and he cleaned them up and he actually painted them. It used to be green. <laughs> 30 years have gone by though and that's faded away but I've used them ever since and they're my favorite pair of pliers. I'd be lost without them and they've been in my videos a number of times. Now you know the story about them. So these are a rescued little pair of pliers that I'm going to put into a box that I rescued from the thrift store. I just love that. I love the color. I love the wonky knobs. I love that it's so convenient. I've actually used it a couple times now because since I filmed this I've been working on the can for the other corner and having this here has been really convenient and fun. I just, I'm inspired by it. I love looking over here and opening the drawers and getting my tools out of there and feeling happy with that little thrift store find makeover. I hope you enjoyed that. So now we're going to do the before and after. I've installed strip lights as well and that was the other surprise. It made all the difference in the world. These are strip lights that I use all around my house. I actually have them in my kitchen as well and underneath my coffee bar. I just love them. I attach them by pulling off the paper backing and they stick really well. Never had an issue with them falling off. And over here is my little control thing and I can actually make them bright or dim. And I'm just so inspired by this wall. I sit here and I think of all the things I want to make, all the things I want to create, and all the videos I want to bring you guys. And the next one, it might include this smelly old shoe brush. Well, it's not smelly anymore. I've washed it since I found it. I got it in a thrift store, same time I got this little unit there. And as soon as I saw it, I thought of something. I won't reveal what it is, but maybe some of you might have a guess. If you've been watching my videos on Radagast, you might, you might have an idea. Anyways, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. Also hit the bell notification so you know the next time I upload a video. And I hope you enjoyed this little craft room journey with me. And until next time, guys, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you super soon.